السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم Dear brothers, Nabil Hamad greets you all and we start by praising God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most beneficent, the most merciful. And we recite the prayer upon his Rasul alayhi salatu wassalam. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon him and upon his descendants and upon his family. Dear brothers, in this great month of Ramadan, lots of reminders around us to tell us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is an academy where we graduate by self-training, self-taming, self-bringing and self-upbringing of ourselves. We learn in Ramadan many lessons. Matter of fact, we teach ourselves in Ramadan many lessons. And we see examples in us before we see examples in others in this blessing month of Ramadan. Number one, when I refrain from eating and drinking willingly without anybody is watching me or spying on me, I'm telling myself I can. I can do in my life whatever I want. So I can program myself. I prove to myself that I have a will, I have a determination, I can really. And the miracle of establishing Islam, if you view history, when the Prophet, may peace be upon him, started in Mecca with few companions, then surrounded by torture and hurting, physical torture, financial torture, social torture, psychological torture and he kept on consistently working on calling the people inviting them for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you read in history that the number of immigrants the companions that migrated with the prophet may peace be upon him from Mecca to Medina to establish the first state of Islam where Islam is already founded and can rule there were no more than 300, or some uh, historians say 314 companions. Those 300, within 10 years, when they made pilgrimage with the Prophet والسلام, the Prophet, after Islam, he made one pilgrimage after uh, migration to Medina. If we say that in that pilgrimage, 100,000 people were pilgrims that year. That means the 300 people resulted in 1 million Muslims within 10 years. That's a miracle. That's a numerical miracle. It's by number. How come we get that gratitude? How come we get, we get that number of Muslims within 10 years? It is because of the quality of the Muslims that the Prophet taught. The Prophet, may peace be upon him, granted his knowledge in them, granted his skills in them. He granted mostly his credibility, his character in those companions. We'll find mountains, summits, Abu Bakr on one side, Omar on the other side, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu anhu ajma'in. May Allah be pleased with them. So again, going back to the fasting, the fasting makes a miracle within every Muslim every year. He witnesses or she witnesses. That means we can form our character the way we want, we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the scholars said, a soul, it's a compulsory poverty. You compel yourself to be poor. You taste what the poor taste. Only for daytime, not the whole day. Only daytime. So we can taste what the poor is suffering from. That's number one. And also I can taste my need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the sustainer. He's the provider. 
So I'm learning here. Sheikh Rafi mentioned this. Another example or lesson we learn from fasting. One of the scholars said, if you saw a faster in a bad mood, his temper, he's angry, he's mad because he's fasting, that's acting of fasting, he said. He's a guy who's imitating the fasters because we didn't learn the essence of fasting. As we mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah that fasting means fasting of the mouth, fasting of the stomach, then fasting of the mouth, not to gossip, not to backbite, not to attack, not to jeer at anybody, not to condemn, not to, to be all the time uh, criticizing, to belittle others. It's also fasting of the eyes, not to look at any forbidden things or suspicious things. Fasting of the ears, purifying it from listening or hearing any bad things. Fasting of the hand, not to harm anybody. Fasting of the feet, not to go to any suspicious place. So this, it reflects, it reflects. So again, we say, fasting wipes out all our past. Imagine, it's a wiper, it's a cleaner. This is why the Prophet said, mentioned in Ramadan, that Ramadan, whoever fasted this month of Ramadan, and he prayed at night, he will be all forgiven. In another hadith, Rasulullah said, It is hurt a person that it should his nose to be belittled and put down. That he witnessed Ramadan and he was not forgiven. That means he didn't live up to the season. He didn't live up to the situation. God Almighty is giving us this season of discounts for paradise. So we can utilize this season. And again, we remind ourselves by the hadith of Rasulullah where he said, Rabba sa'imin laysa lahu min siyamihi illa ju' wal atash. Might be a person who's fasting. He didn't gain from fasting except hunger and thirst. So again, the essence didn't come. We did not reach. The scholars also are telling us, Imam Ibn Rajab, that there is something called batched fasting. Batched fasting means a person is fasting, but he might abuse others by his mouth. So let him ask Allah forgiveness. At least you meet your Lord with patched fasting is better than any other thing. So we need to come back, to repent, to ask Allah forgiveness. Ya Allah, accept our fasting. Ya Allah, don't, don't let, uh, let us make any mistakes while we are fasting so we can up, up bring ourselves into your standard. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Again, when we talk about fasting, we are reminded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about victory in this life. Paradise in this earthly dunya, earthly life that we look in. Some people say Muslims are fatalistic. Only think about the hereafter. No. We need to establish paradise here on earth. Politically, economically, socially, psychologically, in every aspect. How do I establish my family? How do we establish our society? Obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing it according to the way of our idol, our model, Rasulullah, the Prophet, may peace be upon him, wrote for us and paved for us the way how to live our life in every aspect. He didn't leave us any small matter without telling us. And God Almighty is telling us in the Quran. Ya ayuhaladina amanu, it khulu fi silmi kafa. All those who believe, Enter Islam fully. Enter Islam fully means Islamize your personal life. 
Islamize your political life. Islamize your economical life. And so on and on and on. In every aspect, we need to see Islam around us. Not to see it, but to establish it, matter of fact. And we leave it as our legacy. Others will inherit this from us. It's our goal that we see the beauty of Islam around us. So again, these are among the things that we need to be reminded with. And Ramadan is a big reminder. I received an email from a brother from Nigeria called Muhammad. Asked the question. He said, why we make dua? While we see the Muslims in very miserable situation, in every part of the Islamic world you'll find problems. Many countries are suffering from civil wars, disputes. Some countries are suffering from ruthless and ruthless leaders, dictators. Some other countries are, are under occupation of non-Muslims and hurting. The most victims around the earth today are Muslims. Some countries are also suffering from droughts, from hunger, from thirst. How come? And you say we are the victorious, we have Jannah. My brothers, we need to remind ourselves that number one, that Allah has promised to us. And Allah is always fulfilling his promise. Number two, that we need to do with our own hands lots of things. Not to depend on Allah and we sit down. We need to work toward establishing this Islam we're calling for. This kind of duties that we need to establish toward others. Now, we're not only concerned or responsible toward Muslims. We're also concerned and responsible toward all non-Muslims around the earth. We need to talk to them, bring, the, to, bring to them the gift we have. There's a real salvation in this life and in the hereafter. Look at what the Quran says to us. We are reminded by the Quran about victory and about not to lose hope in Surah Yusuf, Joseph, Ayah 87. Allah Almighty says, no one will lose hope from the promise of their Lord, the, uh, the, 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 the hopes of their Lord, except those among those disbelievers. In Surah Al Hijr, Ayah 56. Whoever loses hope from the mercy of the Lord, except those who are misguided. Allah says in Surah Al-Sharh, imagine, Alam nashrah laka sadrak. O Prophet Muhammad wasalam, haven't we expanded your heart, means filling it with happiness. anka wizrak, and we have taken away from you, from your shoulders, your sins. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ And we have exalted your name. People remember your name, say your name. Then Allah says, إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى For sure, with every difficulty there's an ease. With every difficulty there's an ease. And in Arabic, the word came al-usr and the word yusr. When you put alif lam, al-usr, you mean one, one thing. So it's called al-usr, which means the difficulty. But every the difficulty is surrounded by easiness. It really, with the difficulty, easiness. With the difficulty, easiness. That's why. Our Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, one usr, one difficulty, cannot beat two usr. Two easiness surrounding it. So we are promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Allah ba'da usrin yusra, in Surah Al-Talaq. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make after difficulty easiness. That's in Surah Al-Talaq, ayah number 7. Again, إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, the mercy of the Lord is near those who are good doers. That is in Surah Al-A'raf, ayah 56. Allah says to the believers, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will protect you. It's a promise by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 137. But we need to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to know for sure it is there, but we need to do our duties. And again, this is my brothers and sisters, is a reminder of dua. Ramadan is a month that we resort to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learn nowadays we are praying at night prayer. Alhamdulillah, masjids all over the Muslim countries are full of people. And they make dua al qunut. Why I do my hands like this? Because here I'm expecting that something will fall in my hand. That's what we learn from dua. Ya Allah, I, I know that Allah is answering. The problem not is Allah is answering or not answering. The problem, am I sincere in that dua? Am I desperate enough? Do I feel I am in need of you, my Lord? Allah is always able to answer. And we know, we are told by the hadith of Rasulullah sometimes he answers what I ask for. I ask as an example for money. I ask uh, for a wife. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a kid. I ask Allah for a house. He might answer me. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will delay the answer he wants from me to be more demanding, more serving him, more worshiping him. So he's added my rewards. So he's answering me later on, but he's adding to my rewards in paradise. And it's also among his secrets, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he might not answer me because he knows if I get that money, I'll be corrupted. If I do that, it might, it might be not good for me. So instead, he protects me from another calamity. Might be a calamity coming upon me or difficulty somewhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking that away. So for sure he's answering me. And the most important now, the essential matter is, am I sincere? Am I a real worshiper of Allah? Am I that servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that kneels in rukur, that prostrates in sujood? puts his face, his forehead on the floor, on the ground, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the question. And when we talk about dua, also we are reminded. In dua itself, many, many manners that we need to learn. Number one, the scholars are telling us, when you make dua, start by mentioning Allah's names. Allah's attributes. Ya Allah, I ask of you because you are the most generous. You are the most merciful. Ya Allah, because of your bounties upon us. Ya Allah, you are the all-knowing. Ya Allah, you are the all-hearer. Ya Allah, you are the all-able. So I ask Allah by his, by his own attributes. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his bounties upon me. Ya Allah, you have nourished me. Ya Allah, you have given me. Ya Allah, you have, I mention, I need to mention different bounties and blessings. I'm blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue with the manners of dua, inshallah, after this break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. We've been talking about dua and the importance of dua since we are coming toward the last days of Ramadan. And throughout those nights, we are praying and making dua al qunut. And we wanted Allah's answer upon us. 
I might start also when we talk about dua to say I need to do the pre-work. Before I make dua, I make sure I am obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet, may peace be upon him, told us, رُبَّ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرْ وَيَرْفَعُ يَدَاهُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَأَنَّ يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامٌ It might be a person who's troubling himself at night, not combed, and he's saying, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. But he has eaten haram, forbidden things. And he has drinking forbidden. And his clothes is from forbidden things. How could Allah answer him? So number one, I need to make sure that my income is lawful, halal. I make sure that my work is not suspicious. I obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my life. My, I feed my family from lawful things. And I'm feeding them lawful things themselves. Then when I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will answer me. Number two, I need to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start by obeying Allah, doing some worship before you make the dua. Some sincerity is needed before I make the dua. Then when now when I make the dua, as I said, we start by glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we start mention after that the bounties of Allah upon us. Ya Allah, I ask of you. Because you have given me eyes, you have given me ears, you have given me this life, this heart, this body, feet, hands. Ya Allah, you have blessed my house, my family with nourishing. You are feeding me, you're feeding my family, you are sustaining us. So mentioning Allah's bounties upon us. And also among the things that help us in to answering the dua, reciting the prayer upon the Prophet After saying, Ya Allah, glorified you are, and I said, Wa usalli wa usallim a Rasulillah, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammadin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. It will help also in to answering the dua. Then also I need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by mentioning my deeds. Ya Allah, you know that I pray for you. Ya Allah, you know that I'm giving my alms, giving the charity, the zakah, the sadaqah to the poor for your sight, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you know that I'm shaking every Muslim hand for your sake. I, I need to mention my dues toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also helps into answering the dua, the sincere confession to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, you know that I am your servant. I am vulnerable. I'm not doing my salah well. I'm doing the fard, but I'm not doing the sunnah. I need to confess. Ya Allah, you have ordered me with many things. I'm not doing them. I need to confess. And the only one you confess to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's your secret between you and your Lord. It also will help into answering my dua. It's also okay by scholars to mention, if I know about great people around me alive, I know they're sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following Quran and Sunnah, I can ask Allah by them. The Sahaba, Sayyidina Umar, when it was not raining, he came to Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet He said, Ya Allah, we used to ask you by the Prophet when the Prophet was alive. And now the Prophet is not alive. So we ask you, Ya Allah, by the nearest one to the Prophet, his own uncle, Al-Abbas. Ya Abbas, make dua for us. So they made the Al-Abbas to make dua for them. It's not right to ask Allah by any dead person. I don't ask, Ya Allah, because of so-and-so, so-and-so, somebody died. I feel they are sincere, they are good, but not to ask Allah by people who are dead. And it's not right also to ask other means but Allah. Some people say, Ya Fulan, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can intercede with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except your deeds. So these among some of the manners of duha. We learn also, my brothers and sisters, from the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many lessons. 
of the manners of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, as an example, Sayyiduna Ayyub, Job, may peace be upon him, he's mentioned in the Old Testament, he's mentioned in the Quran. Everybody knows the story of Ayyub. He's the person who got almost the most physical test in his life. He had seven gardens, and he had seven children, and he was a very healthy person. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing him. So all of his seven gardens were burned. He lost his income. All his seven children died, one after the other. They didn't die together, one after the other. So it was the test, step by step, for our Prophet Ayyub salam. Then he got arthritis. His own joints are not working well. So he was totally paralyzed. In that situation, miserable situation, you might say, what did he say? He said, Rabbi, inni massani dhurru wa anta arhamur rahimin. Imagine this dua. My Lord, I've been touched by some hurt. I've been touched by some hurt. And Ya Allah, you are the most merciful. That's it. He didn't go in details. He said, Ya Allah, I lost my kids. Ya Allah, I lost my gardens. Ya Allah, I lost my health. I'm paralyzed. I'm poor. He didn't claim to the people or cry to the people to beg them. He said, Ya Allah, I've been touched by hurt, and you are the most merciful. Depending on your mercy, do whatever you like. It means, look at the example of this Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has healed him, and he made him an example of a healthy person after a sick person, because he stood up for the test. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam will learn from him also another example. After he left Egypt, fearing them because they were about to kill him, and he says, staying there somewhere in the uh, desert, he said, Rabbi, inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. My Lord, I am showered by your mercies. I am in, I am in poverty for some of the goodness you have given to me. So this is the politeness of the dua of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. We have Brother Hussam is calling. Fadal. Brother Hussam. Brother Hussam, you are on the phone. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Hussam. You might have lost him? Right, okay. So again, going back uh, again on the same subject, we've been talking again about manners of dua. Sayyidina Ibrahim will learn from him another lesson. Now Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, he wanted to make dua for his offspring, his children, and his children of children. But he said what? رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي that's it. He said, Rabbi, make me among those who are establishing in the prayer and also among my offsprings. Because he knows that in Allah's wisdom, many generations will come after him. I cannot guarantee all of those generations are good. But yeah, Allah, among my generations, among my offsprings, make them among those who establish prayer. So this is again another sign of the politeness of the prophets with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in making dua. Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him. When he was asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the people who worshipped him, he said to them, I was telling them right. But I'm yeah, saying, Ya Allah, فَإِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكُ وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَأَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ my Lord, if you punish them, they are your servants. As if he's saying, Ya Allah, they are your servants. You are, they are your uh, servants. You are, they are your creation. 
So he's saying, he's leaning into mercy. Ya Allah, I'm begging your mercy. Even upon those enemies of mine, upon those who hurt me, upon those who worship me, they are wrong. Ya Allah, but you are able. They are your servants. And if you forgive them, he didn't say, فَأَنْتَ الرَّحْمَنُ الرَّحِيمُ No. If you forgive them, Ya Allah, you are the mighty, the wise. So he's asking Allah's mercy by his own might. You are able, Ya Allah, by your ability, forgive them. So again, we witness in here the politeness of Isa alayhi salam in making this dua. And again, we need to be always desperate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to be really in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. That's what we need in order for us to have this happy life, enjoyment of this life, of this dunya, and enjoyment of the hereafter. That will be, inshallah, in the day of judgment among those who pass as-sirat, the passage between Jannah and Nahr fast, and to enter into paradise, and to get to the palaces. And everybody gets his palace according to his deeds. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. My dear brothers and sisters also, among the reminders of Ramadan is sadaqah. And we'll be talking later on about zakat al-fitr itself. But sadaqah in general, that we need to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we have tasted the hunger. We have tasted the thirst. We have tasted during daytime how to be desperate. So I need to have what we say, sympathy in my heart toward those who are hurt, whether Muslims or not Muslims. My job is to satisfy everybody. And Imam al-Sha'bi said, whoever looked at sadaqah and the reward of that charity, that I am in need, I am in more need than the poor himself. So I didn't reach the, the understanding. He said, he said, the real understanding that when you are giving the poor, that you need to feel that you are poorer than him. So you're paying your dues. And you need to see that his hand, when you put in his hand, as if you are putting in Allah's hand. Do you feel that? Because some fe people feel arrogant. I'm giving those poor. So I am I have the upper hand, and he has the lower hand. No, it's not that way of thinking. Okay, we have a call, a shirio. Shirio. So we lost Hussam and Shiri one after the other. Again, an Imam al Layth, right, we have another call. Uh, Imam al Layth said, Whoever took Sadaqah from my hand, he has paid me his own bounties. Umar, Brother Umar, Salaamu Alaikum. Yes, my name is Umar. Ayyakum, Salaamu Rahmatullah, Tafadal Yahi. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, my brother. What are the names of Shaq? What are? Yes, my is is not a question. Yes. I say mine is not a question. What I want is prayer. What I want is prayer. Could you please talk to me from the phone and lower down the TV because it makes duplication sound here. <laughs> what I want is prayer. I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. Yes, I'll tell you that. Yes, what I want is prayer. I want you to pray for me. For all my problems, I have a problem, but I want you to pray for me so that I will get out of this problem. Inshallah. It's a problem to you, but I want you to pray for me. 
عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. We have also brother Yusuf. Brother Yusuf is with us. Okay, could you clarify your voice? You're talking about zakah. And the money, the money. Let me just use dollar as a as if the money is over five thousand dollars. Allah, your voice is not clear, Brother Yusuf. Right. I'm not sure if he's asking about zakat or fitr or zakat in general. But as Brother Omar said, that he wants us to pray for him. Matter of fact, all of us pray for our own selves. But also we pray for Brother Omar and for every Muslim, everybody around this earth. And we need to be sincere in our dua. Allahumma rabbana farrij ilham an akhina Omar. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's anta. Glorified you are. We want you, Ya Allah, to make it easy for our brother Omar and to take all difficulties away from his life. He and every desperate person on this earth. We ask you, Ya Allah. When I mentioned also among the manners of dua, so we started by saying that before dua, Clean your income. In dua, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glorify the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Mentions Allah's bounties upon you. Mention what you've done of good deeds toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Confess with your bad deeds. Also, start by asking Allah specifically about yourself and upon your family. Then, make the circle bigger and bigger. Ya Allah, forgive me and my wife, and my daughters, and my sons, and my parents, and my family, and my neighbors, and my society, and my nation, and forgive the whole world. So in, increase the circle. Make the dua as general as you could. Allah is rich. Allah is the most rich. Don't think of any limitation. Allah has no limitation. So don't feel that you know, you know you've done a lot. When you ask a human, you have to be careful that to ask something possible. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is possible. There is no impossibility with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we make the dua with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask more. Allah is able. And ask Allah this, this prayer. And do not ask Allah in hesitation. Might he answer, might not answer. No, Allah is answering. And to be consistent every day. Don't feel that you are demanding. Because Allah loves from his servant to be demanding in dua. Anybody of us can be bothered by lots of questions. But Allah. Allah loves from us to ask him. Allah loves from us to feel that we are in desperate need of his. He is the most generous. There is a hadith of Rasulullah that said there might be a person asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is telling the angels, don't give him what he wants now. I love to hear his voice. The more Allah hears your voice, the more rewarded you are. So you'll be giving later on, but you are rewarded more. Please, my brothers and sisters, among the easiness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, look at all the situations. Look at all the stories we hear in Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his forgiveness and we'll come back after this break. Please bear with us. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم Dear brothers, welcome back in Fatawa And again, we've been talking about dua And we've been talking also about sadaqa and charity Do we feel responsible? One of the tabi'een, he used to say in dua 
يا الله I seek refuge by Allah by you from every hungry person that I feel I'm responsible among the dua اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الجوع اللهم إني أعوذ بك من نفس لا تشبع we seek Allah سبحانه وتعالى يا الله I seek refuge by you from hunger and also I seek refuge by you يا الله that from a self that is not satisfied always is eating always wanted also I seek refuge by Allah سبحانه وتعالى by saying اللهم إني أعوذ بك من العجز والكسل from hurt or sleeplessness, being sleepy, being not able, being not doing, and also I seek refuge by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this ability. Allahum inni a'udhu bika min du'a'i la yusma' wa min da'wati la yustajabu laha. I seek refuge by you, ya Allah, from a call for you is not answered. And also, I seek refuge by you, Ya Allah, from a call from you that you cannot, you don't hear. Because I didn't deserve from you that you listen to me. So this is among the dua that we need to bring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking him his forgiveness and his mercy. Dear brothers, again, it's among respons our responsibility all around the earth to be just. To be fair, we need as much as possible to be fair. Treat people as you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat you. I cannot raise my hand while I'm doing injustice upon other people. Injustice is very, very bad deed. The Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, أَنَّهُ لَا قُدِّسَتْ أُمَّةِ لَا يَنَالُ الضَّعِيفُ فِيهَا حَقَّهُ غَيْرَ مُتَعْتَعْ there is no holiness for a nation where the poor person cannot get his rights without difficulty. No matter what I have, no matter how much I pray, as long as there are some hurt people by me, some people that I acted upon them with injustice and fairness, dua is not answered. So I need to seek refuge by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them, not to hurt them. Again, clean my acts. I need to clean my acts. Now, my brothers, we'll talk a little bit about zakah. Because Ramadan, it's like the habit of Muslims throughout Ramadan that they are reminded by their almsgiving, their due charity that's supposed to be done by them. So we say the classification of zakah, what is it? We talked before about to whom we give the zakah. We are told by the scholars that we give the zakah for al-fuqara, al-masakin, al-amiluna aliha, al-mu'allafatu qulubuhum. We divide it between what we say al-fuqara, which means the poor people, al-masakin, the needy people. Some scholars, they say, al-faqir is the one who cannot afford for food of today. The needy, al-miskeen, the person who can arrange for today, he has his food of today, but he has no security for tomorrow. And also, al-amiluna alayhi, those who are workers of collecting the zakah, they get their salaries out of it. And also, al-mu'allafatu qulubuhum, new Muslims, people who are on the edge, people who are on the borders, people we need to help them. And also riqab, as we mentioned, if we know about any slave anywhere on earth, it's a must upon the Muslim ummah to free all the slaves. So we pay zakah to free those slaves. And also those who are in debt. We know all over the Muslim countries, many people are in jail because of their debts. We need to pay to get them out. Also fi sabilillah. Fi sabilillah can be Number one, for those fighters on the borders, or like fighters who are fighting the disbelievers, protecting the Muslim Ummah anywhere, like today in Syria, other, any other places. And also for da'wah, for propagation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
to call for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help any media that working sincerely toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Magazines, newspapers, uh, sites, in the net, uh, TV stations, others, where they, we know for sure they are sincere and doing good job, and they are working to call people for Allah. That's considered peaceabilillah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, at the time of Umar bin Abdul Aziz radiallahu anhu, he was told that we paid all people zakah and still some extra money. He said, go and search for any person who's in debt. Pay all the debts. They told him we did. What can we do? We have extra money. He said, okay, marry all those bachelors. Because among the duties of the societies, Muslim society specifically, it to, is to marry all bachelors, not to leave anybody who is not married. So again, this among the, the, the parts of zakah. What are the dues of zakah? Now the question. If I have money, as an example, any cash, things are kept in the bank or in a safe, cash money or debt money or credit money, as you call it. The scholar is tell us, telling us for the cash, if I own for a whole year what's equivalent to 590 five grams of silver, the equivalent of that, it's kept like a minimum. My minimum is 595 grams. I need to pay zakah. And the zakah, the sadaqah, the purification of money, is 2.5% of that money. Let's suppose I own a building and I'm renting it. If my income of that building on a monthly basis comes to a yearly basis of no less than 595 grams of silver, I need to pay money equivalent to 2.5% of that income. For the trading people, the same thing. If I'm working in trades, goods, exchanging, importing, exporting, whatever. Again, from my pure income here, the pure income I have on monthly basis, I make an average. And from that average, I pay 2.5% as charity, zakah. Let's suppose I am working in jewelries, or some people, they own jewelries to keep them yani, wealthy. Again, for any gold, any equivalent gold of 85 grams, I need to pay zakah. Silver, 595 uh, grams is also equivalent what we call an an al an, 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 nisab an nisab which means the minimum I own, I pay again two point five percent. We have a telephone call from Brother Abdul Wasi. Fadal. Fadal, Brother Abdul Wasi. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hayak Allah. Hello? Yes, my brother, I hear you. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. For sure, inshallah. Inshallah. I want you to pray for me. Okay. Ya Allah, grant all our brothers, Hussam and Shiri and Omar and Yusuf and Abdul Wasi and all the Muslims who hear us or see us. All, all of them, grant them, inshallah, your forgiveness, inshallah, in these specific days. We have Brother Omar, Fadal. Yes. Fadal. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. My, uh, first of all, let me thank Shad for the prayer he offered to me, on me. Yes. And my question is on the car to the when is the cattle feature supposed to be given out? Is it on the day of uh, the Salat or three days before the Salat, uh, the day of the Salat? Okay. And to whom is it supposed to be given to? No, no. Thank you. Okay. Hayakallah. Hayakallah, my brother. We'll continue on the matter of the general zakah, and I'll answer Omar on zakat al-fitr, because also this is important subject. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us from the benefits of his. That when we fast this month of Ramadan, we are reminded by the poor who are need in need for food. So though there are some differences among the scholars, do we give it food or we give money? But the majority of the scholars, they said, since Rasulullah mentioned money, I'm sorry, mentioned food, sa'un min sha'ir, sa' means, which is an equivalent to a cup. A cup that you drink is called sa' of sha'ir, wheat. Any kind of food of that country. So number one, the zakat al-fitr is a reminder of the hunger. So we need to feed the people, not to give them money. That the regular zakat, the other charity of giving money, that's open all the time. But zakat al-fitr, the end of Ramadan, and the time of zakat al-fitr, this is the question of Brother Omar. It starts from the end of Ramadan until Salat al-Eid. Supposed to be given before Salat al-Eid. We cannot give it after Salat al-Eid, it will be sadaqah. But of course, many scholars, they say, if you can give it before the day of Eid itself is better in order for you to guarantee that those poor people already, they are making their food, they are cooking it. So while you're enjoying your breakfast during Eid, also they are enjoying their breakfast. And the, uh, the amount of the cattle fitter is one kilo and a half, one kilogram and a half of, let's suppose, rice, wheat, things like that. And uh, I'm going to continue on this after I answer Brother Ibrahim. Brother Ibrahim is with us. Fadal. Yes, my brother Ibrahim. Hello. Ayu, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yes. I'm Ibrahim calling from Nigeria. My question is, I want, I've, 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 I've arranged money for zakat. No. And uh, some people come from for, 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 from uh, a mosque. They need help to build the toilet of the mosque. So I give them the money. Is that okay? No problem, inshallah. Inshallah, no problem. Okay, the question again of Brother Ibrahim, if he wants to give his zakah for that masjid. If you see yourself from your judgment, this is the most need, fine. But let's suppose if there is a, an other needs, family, poor family, other things, now you need to count which is the most needed things to pay your zakah for. Fine. Okay, Brother Ibrahim, Fadal. Hello? Hey, what, Fadal? I said, if after the first thing. Hmm. Hello? Uh, yes, you think what? Hello? Yes, my brother, I hear you. If, if after the first thing, you fast Thursdays and Monday. I said, after the first thing, you go with Thursdays and Monday. I said I do normal fast after the the fast and I do Thursdays and uh, Monday. You you are fasting extra days after Ramadan, you mean? Ramadan. Yes, after the fasting, you fast more days, you mean after Ramadan? Yes, Thursdays and Monday. Yes, we are encouraged um, after, after Ramadan to fast the, what is called the six days of Shawwal. Yes, I do it before Ramadan. No, we don't do it before um, Ramadan. Um, we do it after Ramadan. The, after, after Eid, day of Eid itself is forbidden to fast. The day of Eid. At the end of Ramadan, we, do, we don't fast. Thank you. We have a, bro a brother Sheba. We'll come back to the question of Brother Ibrahim. Siyam al Eid. Ayyam al Eid. Brother Sheba, Fadal. Brother Sheba. Sheba. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, going back to Zakat al Fitr for Brother Omar. Again, as we said, Zakat al Fitr is better to be food. And it's a reminder to us that we Muslims are supposed to be concerned. I look at my neighborhood. I look at the town I'm living with. In. Is there any poor people? 
I'm not looking for beggars, because there's a difference between the poor people and the beggars. Today we are witnessing all over the world, beggary is a job. Lots of people at traffic lights, lots of people here and there, they are asking and begging people. These are not sometimes not the real needy people. Though, though we don't attack them or anything, but again, we need to search really sincerely for the real poor people that we can give. So the cattle fitter again is a reminder, is food mostly. Brother Ibrahim is asking about Siyam after Ramadan, if that's the question I understood. After Ramadan, we are encouraged. Day of Eid, of course, I said it's haram to fast day of Eid, forbidden, whether day Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha. Then after Eid al-Fitr, uh, we are encouraged to fast six days of Shawwal, whether together consecutively or separately, doesn't matter. But we are encouraged to fast those six days of Shawwal. Going back again to the subject of zakah in general, as we mentioned, we need to search. We need to search for poor people. Today, alhamdulillah, we are lucky in many Muslim countries, we have what we say foundations. Foundations who are taking care of those poor people. If you trust any foundation for zakat al-fitr and they give food, that's fine. For zakah in general, also, if you trust a certain foundation that helps the poor people, the needy people, people who are uh, out of jobs, things like that, also that's fine. Going back to the categories of zakah, we mentioned the cash people, we mentioned the trading people. For the farmers, the people who work in agriculture, the Nisab is 653 kilograms. If the product of my agriculture, the yearly product is 653 kilograms and above, I need to pay zakah, the charity. And it is, if I am irrigating my own farm, that means I am providing the water, I'm working and I'm paying money and I'm bringing irrigated water, I pay the, 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 the bills, I pay 5% of the income of that agricultural product. But if I'm not working on the irrigation, alhamdulillah, Allah is providing me either with rain or rivers or lakes, water comes naturally, I pay 10% of the income of the agricultural uh, products, inshallah. For those, like as an example, they have sheep, camels, cows, uh, also there are certain dues. Example, if I have, uh, uh, let's say, sheep, uh, the judgment from every 100 sheep, I need to pay one sheep. One sheep, I get it out, I give it to the poor. I, that's the zakah of the sheep. Uh, we'll continue about cows uh, after. This Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. We are talking now in the last uh, end of this episode about charity and zakah. And we mentioned before the break, the cattle fitter, and we are talking now about the almsgiving, which is the annual uh, zakah that I have to pay among my income. And we mentioned, we start by mentioning the people who have cash or things in the bank, they are working, they are, have income. Uh, we said it's 2.5%. Also for those who are uh, working on the field of uh, selling or uh, renting apartments or building or houses also, they need to count how much the income that comes on a yearly basis. And the minimum, again, is what's equivalent to 595 grams of silver. So they pay 2.5%. For the people who are working uh, in agriculture, we said like farms, if they have uh, of their product, of farms uh, products, what's equivalent to 653 kilograms a year, they pay 
if they are uh, getting the irrigation themselves. They are working on bringing the water into the farm. And 10% if it is irrigated naturally by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we come to what, what we say, the sheep uh, owners and the cow owners and the camel owners. For the sheep owners, uh, the zakah goes every 40 sheep. If you have 40 sheep and above, you pay one sheep to every 30 sheep. It means you have 30 sheep, you pay one sheep, or you give it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have 120 sheep, you get two sheep as zakah. طيب. Again, we have a telephone call from Ms. Kura. Ms. Hello. Kura. Hello. Ayo, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, sister. Tfaddali. Ms. Kura, tfaddali. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, sister. I, I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, my sister, go ahead. The question I want to ask is um, if someone is fasting and is that if someone is fasting and vomit, can the person still continue with the fast or not? And he vomits? Right. Okay. On the question of vomiting uh, of the faster, if a person vomits out of sickness, it's not in his hand, then it doesn't break his fast. But if the person, as an example, sticks his finger inside his throat and causes unnatural vomiting, he broke his fast. And that's a sin, of course, because causing the vomiting, unless there is a need. Uh, at least there is a need, as an example, somebody swallowed things by wrong uh, things and he wanted to, to cause himself to vomit, but he breaks that fast and he needs to make up for that day. Okay? That's for uh, Miss Kura. Uh, going back to the sheep, we said again for the sheep, uh, if you have 30 sheep, you pay one sheep. For 120, you pay two. 300 sheep and above, you need to pay three out of those sheep or goats. When we talk about sheep, the same thing for goats or sheep. Then after that, from every 100, you pay one. Okay? This is for sheep and goats. For cows, if you have 30 cows and above, you pay one cow as a charity. Then after that, you count for every 40 cows, you give another cow, one cow for that, uh, for that, uh, uh, for those who have cows. Uh, Sufia? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum as -salam. Sister Sufia, yes, tfadali. Yes, I'm asking a question. My question is, um, I run a business, and uh, I'm always, uh, I try my best, but how, I'm just a bit confused whether, how much I have, do I have to pay on my net profit or a total, um, like some people told me, you have to pay 2.5 on the amount of stock you buy every month, like calculate it every month. Or, but I think it, uh, or whether it is um, um, on a total or on a profit, I don't understand which one would be the right one mm. to pay the cap for 2.5. Yeah. yeah uh, yani, I, I'm doubted the question. If you have talk about your income, Let's suppose your salary, let's say, $5,000. Uh, no, $5,000 is too much. Let's say $2,000 a, a month, let's suppose. So you count for the whole year. Now, every month when I receive those $2,000, as an example, how much I spent on them on rent or things like that, what is the, what's the end? The end of every month. I don't count how much comes in, what ends every month on the average. So I count the average throughout the year, and I pay the zakat, the 2.5% on the average. 
not the, on the real income because uh, the every income has of course expenditure. After you pay the expenditure, you count how much is left with you. Let's suppose every month in Saudi Riyals is left with me 500 Riyals only, which is equivalent uh, today maybe to maybe $130 almost. If that's the minimum thing I have in every month, so now I need to pay Zakat 2.5% of that lift of money. If you're asking about jewelries, there are two ways to count for the jewelries. For the jewelries, among those jewelries you have, gold or silver, either you pay zakah, you pay money, because many, many ladies, they keep the jewelries for the time, because it's a wealth, not to wear, but it's a wealth for time, for uh, conserving them for the time of need. So either you pay 2.5% of the amount or the price of those gold or silvers you have, or you need to uh, donate one piece of jewelry, small one piece of jewelry every year. Yeah, and if something is costing a little bit, not but that much, but it will be counted for part. You're giving away for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the poor people among the jewelries you are conserving for yourself. Inshallah, that will be the answer, inshallah. Uh, going back again for the camels, those who own camels, if you have five camels and above, you have to pay zakah. And it goes that way. For uh, the first 24 camels you have, you have to pay one sheep. One sheep for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have uh, uh, between 25 camels and above, the, uh, I, until you reach 30, 35, I'm sorry, from 25 to 35, you pay one camel, which is one year old camel for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 36 to 45, again, two years camel. If you have 36 uh, to 45, again, uh, two years camel. 40, 46 camels to 60 camels you own, you need to pay or you give away a camel which is three years old. From until 75, from 61 till 75 camels, you give away four years old camel. If you have uh, between 67 until 90 camels, you give away two camels which are equivalent of two years camels. Again, 191 to 120 camels, you give two camels away who are two years old. Anything above 120 uh, one camels you have, you give for every 40 camels, one year old camel. That's the zakah for the different aspects of, of the people. And again, the zakah and the charity, it's a reminder, my brothers and sisters, for us. Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ among the characters of those believers who deserve paradise, those who spend at the time of easiness, as sarra and the time of difficulty, ad And now we can see like a ladder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making us, giving us a ladder of challenges to us. It's easy for me. I have lots of money that I put my hand in my pocket and I give away for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But let's suppose my income is 10 riyals. And I give five riyals out of the, of the ten. That means I'm paying 50% of my money to the poor. This is, this is called Abdurra. Sister Sophia has another question. Fadali? Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. I've got another question for you. Yes, Fadali. Uh, is it possible to pay the card throughout the year? Uh, I know it's a special time, Ramadan, but if, what, if, is, it, is it also possible to pay as you go every year, uh, throughout the year? Yes. Uh, let me uh, clarify. Uh, Ramadan is not specified for zakah, but most of the people, they pay their zakah in, in Ramadan. Zakah is yearly charity, whether any month of the year you want to choose. Let's suppose, uh, let's suppose I own a business and my income comes in January. I go by Gregorian, no problem. In January, I give away my zakah. 
But it's uh, like the habits of the people, they like to uh, give their zakah in Ramadan because it's more rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Uh, again, going back to the question of yours, if I want to pay it on a monthly basis, fine. As long as I'm paying from my income, my charity. Even I can do it on my monthly basis. Or I can do it on any, on any other part of the year. No problem, inshallah. And again, uh, I was saying that, you know, the zakah itself, it's a reminder to us that the, the debts upon us. So we can pay for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala charity if we own. If I cannot, or the latter as I was mentioning now, at the time of difficulty. But more importantly, those what who suppress their anger. Imagine that's a zakah. That when somebody is intimidating me, trying to get me angry, and I suppress my anger, Allah is telling me, that's more difficult than giving the zakah, giving the sadaqah from your pocket. Because now you're giving from your own self-esteem, your own pride, your own arrogance. al kadhimin al ghais those who suppress their anger. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ are above. Not only I suppress my anger, but also I forgive people. By the way, suppressing the anger, the Prophet, may peace be upon him, has told, has told us that the best sip in the sight of Allah is a sip of anger. مَا مِنْ جُرْعَةٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ جُرْعَةِ غَيْظٍ كَظَمَهَا الْعَبْدُ لِلَّهِ The best sip that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves is the sip of anger that I hold myself, held myself not to revenge. And in my throat, I feel that feelings of difficulty. I want to revenge, but I'm making myself restrained. If a person does that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him among the mermaids of paradise to choose 70 mermaids. So again, that's an anger. But better than that, only even if somebody is intimidating me, not only I restrain myself, but also I forgive. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Those who forgive others. Also, we are reminded not only by that. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah loves from those who are muhsin. They're perfectionist. How? Not only the person who is intimidating me, I restrain myself not to revenge, not only to forgive him, but even to go one step further to do him good. This is a test of enhancing myself. How can I become like an angel? How can I restrain myself and I go one step further to forgive and one step further also to be, pay him goodness? It was narrated in the story of an Imam Ali Zain al Abidin, the son of an Imam. Al Hussein, the son of Al Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, that his slave, that time he was, used to have slaves, was bringing hot water and he flipped a little bit and the water was poured on Al Hussein, on Ali, Al Imam Al Sajjad, Ali ibn Zayn al Abidin. So he roared with anger. He said to him, reminded him by Quran, the servant. He said, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ قَالَ كَظَمْتُ غَيْضِ Those who suppress their anger. He said, I have suppressed my anger. He said, وَالْعَفِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ He said, عَفَوْتُ عَنْكِ Those who forgive the people, he said, I forgive you. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those perfectionists, those who give goodness. He said, you are free for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the answer. Again, this is another message for all us, all of us Muslims. How can we be Muslims? How can we be mu'min? The Prophet, may peace be upon him, told us, 
المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده the real Muslim is the one that other Muslims are safe from his tongue and from his hand others are safe Muslim والمؤمن and the believer the, the container of Iman المؤمن من أمنه الناس على أموالهم وأعراضهم he's the one that people can trust him for their money and their fame. He doesn't backbite, he doesn't attack. This is the real believer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his forgiveness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Ramadan of ours, it will be the time for everybody around this earth to be forgiving. And everybody around this earth to forgive each other. And everybody around this earth to come back to God Almighty, the one to submit ourselves to him. Nabil al-Hammad greets you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.